Hello friends and happy Friday. We did it, we finished another week. Every Friday is a forgiveness Friday, so we work on forgiving others, forgiving ourselves. And today, let's do another yucky ball. All right. <clears throat> Did you experience any negative emotions this week? I did. And it's okay to experience negative emotions, you guys. It's how you take care of them that's what's important, right? And do you want to keep these negative emotions inside of you? Not really. It doesn't help you have a good day. They don't help you make good choices. They don't help your body feel good either. When you're mad, your body is tense, and your face is all furrowed, and you're just, <clears throat> right? But then you take a few deep breaths. Your shoulders relax. You take another one. Your arms loosen up. face relaxes, everything about you relaxes, right? And a yucky ball can help you relax too. It can help you get rid of those yucky, negative feelings that are deep inside of you. All right, let's do this. If you were mad this week, get that out. If you were sad this week, get that out. If you felt lonely this week, get that out. If you were overwhelmed this week, get that out. If you were frustrated this week, get that out. Out, 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 out. Ugh. All right, friends. So what do we do with the all those emotions again? Now that they are out, what are we going to do with them? Are we just going to leave them out here in the open? so they can come back to us, or are we gonna try to like, get rid of them? Yeah, let's get rid of them. All right, I got, my, I got my pile of feelings, and now I can't just toss them. They'll probably just flit, float like glitter all over, right? They'll still be here. So we gotta, let's turn them into a ball so we can throw it, right? We can throw it away, mash up those balls of negative feelings, no more yucky thoughts, no more negative thoughts. Ugh, don't need that. All right, friends, I got my ball of feelings. Ready? We're gonna throw And one, two, three, ooh. Ooh, mine's going way far. It's going all the way away from me. Yes, don't come back. I don't need you right now, feelings. Goodbye. Oh, yes. So now I have space in my mind, I have space in my heart and in my body for all the good, positive things in life. I have fun. I have space for fun. I have space for joy. I have space for laughs and smiles now. <sighs> Feels good. And because it's Friday, that means we're reading some books, right? Because we love books. So I have two books, okay, from my good friends, The Fosters. I have Miss Spider's Tea Party. Wait, aren't we learning about the letter T? There it is. Letter T for the word tea. Tea is something you can drink. And then we have another letter T book. Claire's favorite, tops and bottoms. There's that letter T. T is also for tops. Like the top of your head, the top of a shelf. Yeah. All right, friends, let's get into it. Miss Spider's Tea Party by David Kirk.
paintings and verse by David Kirk. Nice going, David. One lonely spider sipped her tea while gazing at the sky. She watched the insects on the leaves and many flying by. If I had friends like these, she sighed, who'd stay a while with me? I'd sit them down on silken chairs and serve them cakes and tea. Two timid beetles, Ike and May crept from the woodwork that same day. But when Miss Spider begged, please stay, they shrieked, oh no, and dashed away. Hmm. Three fireflies flew inside the, that night. Their spirits high, their tails alight. They spied the web and squeaked in fear. We'd better get away from here. The little trio did not feel they'd care to be a spider's meal. Four bumblebees buzzed by outside. Please come to tea, Miss Spider cried. The four ignored her swaying there. They, she waved a tea towel in the air. She took a cup and tapped the glass. Then one bee spoke to her at last. We would be fools to take our tea with anyone so spidery. Oh, this is some sad stuff. Within the shadows of the room, just peeking from behind a broom, five grinning faces bobbed and peered. Miss Spider smiled. Her heart was cheered. Descending for a closer look, she danced into the gloomy nook. But... Sadly, she found those jolly mugs belonged, alas, to rubber bugs. Some ants strode in. They numbered six, but ants with spiders, well, well, no, ugh. Some ants strode in. They numbered six, but ants with spiders will not mix. She brewed them tea from hips of roses. The proud platoon turned up their noses. A fine bouquet concealed its prize of seven dainty butterflies. Miss Spider watching from the wall was not aware of them at all. The tea table was set for eight with saucers, cups, and silver plate. The cakes were fresh, the service gleamed, yet no one would arrive, it seemed. Her company in no demand left her a cup for every hand. Nine spotted moths kept safe and warm in shelter from a thunderstorm. They stood beneath an open sash and watched the jagged lightning flash Miss Spider dropped down on a thread, a silver tray above her head. She hoped to please them, but instead, they flew away in mortal dread. Aw, man. They've left me all alone, she cried. She dabbed her eyes and sadly sighed. It's plain no bug will ever stay. Her tears splashed down upon the tray. Oh, Miss Spider. Then, ten tiny steaming cups of tea were perched atop her trembling knee. She sipped and sobbed, then heard a cough <coughs> and turned to see a small wet moth. A fragile thing so soaked by rain, his wings too damp to fly again. She smiled and took a checkered cloth to cloak the frail and thankful moth. They talked and snacked on tea and pie until his tiny wings were dry. Then, lifting him with tender care, she tossed him gently in the air. That was so kind of her. The moth told Ike, then Ike told May, who went from bug to bug to say, There is no reason for alarm. She never meant us any harm. So, 
Later on that afternoon, assembled in the dining room, 11 insects came to tea to share Miss, P Miss Spider's courtesy. Nice. 12 tender violets in a vase presented at Miss Spider's place. Set by her chair so neatly spun, she munched the blossoms one by one. Her friends were glad to watch her feast upon the floral centerpiece. It was a great relief to see. She ate just flowers and drank just tea. Miss Spider's reputation grew. Before too long, our hostess knew. Each bug who crawled or hopped or flew, and all their lovely children too. The end. That was cool. I like that in the end, the friends, all the buggy friends gave Miss Spider a chance. Very nice. That's great for Forgiveness Friday, y'all. Our next story is Tops and Bottoms by Janet Stevens. Ooh, vegetables. Tops and Bottoms, adapted and illustrated by Janet Stevens. Thanks, Janet. Once upon a time, there lived a very lazy bear who had lots of money and lots of land. His father had been a hard worker and a smart business bear and he had given all of his wealth to his son. But all Bear wanted to do was sleep. Not far down the road lived the hare. Although hare was clever, he sometimes got into trouble. He had once owned land too, but now he had nothing. He had lost a risky bet with a tortoise and had sold all of his land to Bear to pay off the debt. Hare and his family were in very bad shape. The children are so hungry, Father Hare. We must think of something, Mrs. Hare cried one day. So Hare and Mrs. Hare put their heads together and cooked up a plan. The next day, Hare hopped down the road to Bear's house. Bear, of course, was asleep. Hello, Bear! Wake up! It's your neighbor, Hare, and I have an idea. Bear opened one eye and grunted. We can be business partners, Hare said. All we need is this field right here in front of your house. I'll do the hard work of planting and harvesting, and we can split the profit right down the middle. Yes, sir, Bear. We're in this together. I'll work and you sleep. Oh, said Bear. So, what will it be, Bear? Asked Hare. The top half or the bottom half? It's up to you. Tops or bottoms? Uh, let's see, Bear said with a yawn. Oh, I'll take the top half, Hare. Right, uh, tops. Hare smiled. It's a done deal, Bear. So Bear went back to sleep and Hare and his family went to work. Hare planted, Mrs. Hare watered, and everyone weeded. Bear slept as the crops grew. When it was time for the harvest, Hare called out, Wake up, Bear! You got the tops and I get the bottoms. Hare and his family dug up the carrots, the radishes, and the beets. Hare plucked off all the tops, tossed them into a pile for Bear, and put the bottom sides, bottoms aside for himself. Bear stared at his pile. But Hare, all the best parts are in your half. You chose the top, Spare, Hare said. Now, Hare, you've tricked me. 
You plant this field again, and this season I want the bottoms. Hare agreed. It's a done deal, Bear! So Bear went back to sleep, and Hare and his family went to work. They planted, watered, and weeded. Bear slept as the crops grew. When it was time for the harvest, Hare called out, Wake up, Bear! You get the bottoms and I get the tops! Hare and his family gathered up the lettuce, the broccoli, and the celery. Hare pulled off the bottoms for Bear and put the tops in his own pile. Bear looked at his pile and scowled. Hare, you have cheated me again. But Bear, Hare said, you wanted the bottoms this time. Bear growled. You planted this field again. You've tricked me twice. And you owe me one season of both tops and bottoms. You're right, poor old bear, sighed Hare. It's only fair that you get both tops and bottoms this time. It's a done deal, bear. Hmm. We'll see about that, friends. So, bear went back to sleep and Hare and his family went back to work. They planted, watered, and weeded, then watered and weeded some more. Hmm, Bear slept as the crops grew. And when it was time for the harvest, Hare called out, Wake up, Bear! This time you get the tops and the bottoms! Uh oh. There, in front of Bear's house, lay a high field of corn. Hare and his family yanked up every corn stalk. Hare tugged off the roots at the bottom and the tassel at the top and put them in a pile for Bear. Then he carefully collected the ears of corn in the middle and placed them in his own pile. Bear rubbed his eyes and watched. See, Bear? You get the tops and the bottoms. I get the middles. Yes, sir, Bear. It's a done deal. By now, Bear was wide awake. That's it, Hair, he hollered. From now on, I'll plant my own crops and take the tops, bottoms, and middles. Hare and his family scooped up the corn and hopped down the road towards home. Bear never again slept through a season of planting and harvesting. Hare bought back his land with the profit from the crops, and he and Mrs. Hare opened a vegetable stand. And although Hare and Bear learned to live happily as neighbors, they never became business partners again. The end. That was cute. That was a funny little thing. Thank you for being here with me at another circle and I hope you guys all have a good weekend.